cataract coach. And we have an interesting case here. We're going to be able to monitor viscoelastic retention during the surgery. Here's how. As we instill the anesthetic in the eye, there's a little air bubble in it, so look what happens. We get a tremendous number of air bubbles on the undersurface of the cornea, right against the endothelium. Look at this picture here. I'll readjust the focus. All those little dots are little tiny air bubbles. So we'll instill the dispersive viscoelastic now, and it'll push and keep those air bubbles in place. So now we still see air bubbles along the corneal endothelium held in place now with the viscoelastic. Well, this is going to enable us to monitor the retention of viscoelastic during the surgery. If the air bubbles go away, then we can assume that the viscoelastic in that area has gone away as well. And the past surgeons have also used in studies viscoelastics that have stains in them or dyes to help visualize them better. But in this case, we're just using our standard viscoelastics. So we'll make our round capsular axis, and again, because of the focus plane, we're focusing down on the capsule, but we can still tell that there are bubbles up against the corneal endothelium. There you go, depending on the angle and the reflection of light. So creating our nice round capsular axis, and we'll finish that up here. You do note that I center the capsular axis on the visual axis. That's why it's a little closer to the nasal edge of the iris. Here comes some balanced salt solution on a blunt cannula for some hydrodissection. We get a few fluid waves. And note here how we tend to lose a little viscoelastic when we do this. So we want a good hydrodissection. We want rotation of the nucleus. That looks great. And we're going to coat a little extra dispersive viscoelastic there in the center. Now again, don't worry at this point that you can't see the air bubbles. They are there. They're present. We'll see them again at the end after the cataract is removed. So we'll do a quick chop technique here. Buzz the phaco probe in the nucleus. Chopper goes in as well. Bring them together and apart. And just take our time to fully separate these two halves. And that should make life a lot easier. So as the halves are separated, we bring the first half up into about the iris plane and aspirate it. And what's nice here is we can determine, are we losing viscoelastic during this portion of the procedure? Or are we maintaining a coat of the dispersive viscoelastic on the corneal endothelium? And I'll show you at the end that we actually do maintain the viscoelastic. First half of the nucleus is out. Here comes the second half. Buzz in with the phaco probe. Bring it towards the center of the eye. Chopper goes around it to chop off a little piece. And we can remove the remainder of it now. Chopper just feeding the piece towards the probe. And we're going to examine again. We'll see centrally here the amount of bubbles that are remaining. So last bit of nuclear pieces coming out. Note that the chopper is in that safe position to protect the posterior capsule, prevent it from coming up. And there's some little bit of a couple of fragments here, so maybe some epinucleus. We'll get that out with the IA probe. So switching to the IA probe, again, depending on the light angle, you should be able to see there's still some a good number of bubbles there along the corneal endothelial surface. We're showing you the video unedited and in real time just to give you an idea of the entire case. So here comes the IA probe, removing our cortex and maybe any epinuclear pieces like this. Certainly we can use our spatula or other instrument to help push it into the aspiration port. To remove cortex, if you watch my videos you know I like more of a circumferential approach so grabbing at least a couple clock hours at once and then pulling centrally. So again, circumferential, grab at least a few clock hours prior to pulling radially. And that allows you to do it in fewer steps. And then we'll go around 360 here, including sub-incisional. And look carefully at the presence of bubbles. We can still see there are bubbles present there. And I think we'll adjust the lighting here shortly so you can tell. And there's that last bit of sub-incisional cortex. There's a piece right, oop, there we go. You saw that grab of the posterior capsule. We let go very quickly. And the sub-incisional cortex is a little tougher to remove. So what are we going to do? Ah, we got it. There is a strand of mucus on the surface of the cornea as well. We should wash that off. There we go. The black dot there at the limbus is just to mark the steep axis. 
There's the viscoelastic to come in, the cohesive. And look, we still have bubbles on the undersurface of the cornea. And that tells me that that's great that we've maintained the viscoelastic in the eye. So you can watch, see, I see the bubbles there, tiny little dots? Perfect. Now putting the eye well in the capsule bag first, and we'll rotate it around, and that'll help loosen up the subincisional cortex. There's still a tiny piece of subincisional cortex that we're going to want to remove. We don't want to leave that in the eye. So we can use that haptic to push on that cortex as we rotate the lens, and that'll help free it up. In addition, when we put the eye probe uh, back in the eye, the eye well will keep the posterior capsule away from us, so we'll be able to access the subincisional. So then look at those dots in the center. Those dots that you see, those are the original air bubbles. This is removing that subincisional cortex. Great. Now removing the viscoelastic from behind the eye well. And the remainder of those bubbles, you'll see as we remove the viscoelastic from in front of the eye, we're going to remove all those bubbles as well. So clearing out all the viscoelastic. This is a high flow setting now, so 50 or 60 cc's a minute, high vacuum. There's still some air, the little mucus being removed. There's still some air bubbles there in the center, little black dots. And now, as you can see, we remove those, and you'll remove all the remaining dispersive viscoelastic from the cornea. So certainly the viscoelastic did its job in this case. Thanks for watching.